Before we get into this episode, I want to start off by saying that Belize is a beautiful country. During my visit, I was welcomed with so much kindness and generosity, which was complemented by its natural landscape, inviting me with open arms to go out and explore. But little did I know that somewhere in this jungle, there are wild birds being taken away from their nests and sold to the highest bidder. Some sell these birds because it may be their only way of survival, but for others, it's purely greed. And because of that, there is a growing concern of illegal trafficking that is wiping out a local population of parrots, poaching them towards extinction. Along with other species of parrots and wild birds who have been mistreated or injured, there is a group of people who are dedicated in doing everything they can to rescue and rehabilitate the local population. And with help from other like-minded people, together they hope to save the yellow-headed parrot from going extinct. It is though, it's just like people, they have different personalities. So we started a bird rescue not because we wanted to, it wasn't our intention. Yep. We ended up um, buying two baby parrots from this kid that was selling them at the door. Um, we didn't know what to do with them, we'd never had parrots before, never touched them, never handled them, never hand raised them. We asked around and nobody was particularly helpful. So anyway, we raised them to be free and they flew off and then a whole bunch of people came by with their parrots and said, do you think you could do the same thing with these? And we're like, well, you know what? These are clipped and they're crying like babies and they can't fly and they're older birds and it's not at all the same thing. But we did it anyway. Ah! Then we went to the forest department and said, hang on, you know, everybody's got parrots and yet it's actually illegal to have them. And uh, the forest department said, well, you know, the problem we have is that we can't enforce our wildlife laws because we have nowhere to put these birds if we confiscate them. So we said, this is what we've been doing. And they said, sign here. And <laughs> here we are, like wow. 18, 19 years later. So it just yeah. happened. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I guess it was meant to be. <laughs> The, uh, the time is currently just uh, around 7 a.m. and the first thing they do here at the rescue is get the, all the parrots food prepared and uh, that's what I want to show you right now. I want to show you what their diet looks like because it's, it's really really cool. The food will change a little bit from day to day. It depends also on the season. We might have some seasonal fruit that we can pick up on the property. Uh, but generally speaking, we will have some sunflower seed that is a good source of energy pretty much every day. Corn for the starch. Papaya is one that is often there because it's very rich in vitamin A. Oranges we get in the property year long, so that's something that is always there as well because it's really easy to get. Then we have a mix of different vegetables. Today we also have some pepper, cucumbers, banana is also a regular, and coconut we get also in the property. Then we might have other seasonal fruits that we can pick up around. And they get about twice a week some vitamins sprinkled on the food as well to uh, make sure they don't need anything else. But it will change from day to day, as in nature it will not be the same every day as well. Towards the back of the property, far from human activity, is one of the most impactful operations this team has created and is home to the endangered species I mentioned earlier called the yellow-headed parrot. With just under 1,600 of these birds in the wild, the Belize Bird Rescue is responsible for releasing 108 of them. This enclosure we call the bush enclosure. If you notice, it's far away from the other ones and the reason for that is because of the, all the other vocalization of the birds and then human interaction on that side. So we try to limit them as much as possible. And because your main goal with these birds is to release them back into the wild. Release them back into the wild, that's correct. You don't want to imprint them with any human behaviors or conversations. Yeah, yeah. so we're trying to keep them as wild as possible. We get them from nests that are um, vulnerable to being poached because they are in the, in the black market, you call it that, in that sense. Um, they're very sought because they 
people believe that they are the smartest of all the mm -hmm. parrot species we have in Belize. When the local rangers are able to remove a parrot chick from its nest before a poacher, the bird is brought to the rescue center and cared for until it becomes flighted. Once the parrot is able to fly, they are released into the wild and are no longer valuable to poachers due to being nearly impossible to catch. It's a bit emotional, but at the same time, it's rewarding because you know you're giving that bird a second chance. My net, got my towel, I just gotta wait for them to show up. In order to keep track of the parrot's whereabouts as well as the overall condition of their health, every bird is equipped with an identification band. While it may be just a little uncomfortable for some of you to be witnessing this, understand that the crew's main concern is to give these birds a second chance at life, and doing this is just another part of the process. In no way does it harm the birds, but for the human, well, that's all a different story. Show me your uh, injury. Holy Jesus. That's gross. Now that we're done with that process, I want to take a moment to show you some of the animals on the property. Yeah, go on. <laughs> oh, he's gonna come in the house. Oh no, he came in the house. Yeah, that's alright. <laughs> that's alright. <laughs> come on, come on. Uh oh. I probably should open the door. <laughs> come on. I've never seen this one before. There you go. All right. That was easy. So one thing I actually often get asked is like, why is it so bad that Belizeans would have a parrot pet? I and mean, they are pets all over the world and it is a really tough argument. Um, the problem we have here is that they're taken from the wild. So when you take a wild bird out of the wild and put it in a cage in the wild, it's a wild bird in a cage. And that is a miserable existence for any animal. And the thing is in, in the States or in Europe, they are captive bred for the trade, they're hand raised mm -hmm. for the trade. And they don't know any different. And they're not given all these wild triggers. Can you imagine living in your own environment and hearing all your friends like running around and having a great time and you're sitting in a cave, probably being fed the wrong diet, had your wings clipped so you can't fly, you can't stretch, can't exercise, miserable existence. So it's just not appropriate. Plus the wild populations can't handle it. All right, Nikki, so what is, uh, what is one piece of advice that you'd like to share with the world? Wow. Um, not really advice, a kind of a, a request, I think, probably just, just be their voice. You know, there's a whole lot of sentient beings out there that can't speak for themselves. So speak up. If you see something wrong happening, make a fuss for them. Make, it, make a change, make a difference. Perfect. Thank you for your time. All right, you're welcome. <laughs>It's moments like these that will forever leave an impact on my life, and I hope that this video has given you a new understanding of what this beautiful country is having to go through. Illegal trafficking for the pet trade is a problem all over the world and will continue to be an issue until we place a higher value on the animal to remain in the wild. How awesome is it that when life presents us with challenges, we can always count on Mother Nature to bring us peace. We must find it within ourselves to be a part of the bigger picture, be the change in our local communities, and help save something before it is gone forever. Hey there, my name is Scott and my channel is about exploring human connection all through the power of a simple hello. If you'd like to subscribe, you can hit this button right here. And then while you're at it, if you wouldn't mind hitting that like button, that would really help get this video out to more people. 
If you'd like to continue watching videos that I've made, here is one that I think you would like. And this one is a video that YouTube thinks that you would like. I wish you a wonderful day and please don't be a stranger. Hope to see you next time.